Hey guys, it's Super Airsoft Fat Cake with another Airsoft video. And today I have rounded up the top seven Airsoft HPA related upgrades for you guys that will enhance your setup, improve efficiency, and make you an absolute beast out there on the Airsoft field. But before we get things started, remember to like the video if you end up liking and subscribe if you want more content just like this. And comment down below if you have any questions about anything that we went over today, today's video, or if you have any other suggestions for any newcomers out there. So yeah, let's get right on it. Starting off with a very obvious one, upgrading your in-grip line as well as your hose. Now the in-grip line is the one that connects from your HPA engine down your pistol grip and your hose is the one that connects from your pistol grip to your tank. The in-grip line is the one that's the most important, the one that you should put all your money into, into getting the best quality weave and the best quality in-grip line that you can possibly get. This is the thing that attaches directly to your engine. If you hit a snag on anything, it's going to be putting that entire strain on the engine and on the in-grip line. If that in-grip line breaks, that means you have to open up your gun, open up your gearbox and replace this and also make sure that no threads that were on the engine itself tore off or broke. Getting a higher quality in grip line gives you better longevity and also damage protection. The amount of times that I had snagged something with my line and just yanked the gun out of my hand uncountable. So I recommend the heavy weave in grip line from Amped Airsoft. They used to offer an industrial weave. I don't know where that went or what happened to it but it just, did, it just doesn't seem to exist anymore. I have the industrial weave because that was the best one that I could possibly find and buy at the time. I'm not entirely sure what happened to their weave lines, but heavy weave is the best one you can buy now. Now, since you spent all your money on the in-grip line, you can go ahead and cheap out and get a more standard looking hose. The one that came with the Wolverine Airsoft regulator was actually really high quality. That one's fantastic. The standard weave or premium weave or heavy weave from Amp Airsoft, any of their hoses or lines are fantastic. So those are the three that I recommend. If you're going out to buy one, go and buy one from Amp Airsoft. If it came with your regulator, if you bought the Storm uh, regulator that I reviewed recently, you can go ahead and keep using that hose as well. But for the in-grip line, buy the heavy weave. Your setup will thank you. Next upgrade on the list is the Blackleaf Speedboard. God, this thing is awesome. It gives you that 0.25 millimeter travel distance trigger. It gives you a clicking trigger, one that gives you a tactile feedback from an actual button being pressed rather than something super mushy like the standard trigger boards that come with your jacks or F1s or Infernos. It's not too heavy either, so it's a very light trigger press, a very short trigger press, and a very crisp trigger press. If you have a jack, F1, F2, uh, Wolverine Inferno or Wolverine Reaper, you can definitely benefit from upgrading to one of these things. When I built my first HPA gun, I put one in. When I built my second one, I built put one in. Recently, when I upgraded my friend's AEG gun to HPA, I put one in there as well. These things are awesome. On top of the trigger feel being absolutely top tier, it also has an electric safety. I know a lot of you guys are running around uh, with drop-in kits that just completely disabled the ability for you guys to have a functioning safety. This trigger board has an electromechanical safety. So if you install the thing correctly, regardless of your drop-in setup, it will have a safety that works if you flip that switch into safety. So yeah, it's perfect for setups where their physical safety just doesn't work. This will help out with that. Now it's not tunable by any means, so you are limited to that 0.25 millimeter trigger pull distance, but it is so good. Buy one, drop it in, trust me. Me, you won't regret it. Next upgrade on the list is a better FCU, specifically Gorilla FCU. Now there are FCUs from the likes of T238 and various other brands out there, but Gorilla FCU is the one that everyone seems to rave about and one that I really want to put into my gun personally. The Gorilla FCU is an essential upgrade if you want to get the most out of your airsoft gun and have maximum control over little little aspects of it to get the most performance. The FCU comes packed with a ton of different features such as adjustable rate of fire, binary, avoiding dry fire with their magazine counter, switching quickly between different play styles such as CQB, DMR, and even enabling tournament lock for those stricter events. If you're serious about dialing in the performance of your HPA gun, Getting girl FCU is the way to go. Now, next on the upgrade list are shims. Shimming your HPA engine to your gearbox is one of those things that pays off in the long run with performance. For anyone running a drop-in kit like the Polar Star Jack, F1, F2, Wolverine Inferno, this is almost essential. It's very, very inexpensive and a little piece that you just put into the gearbox. That way you have perfect nozzle alignment within your gearbox. The tolerances are nice. The engine stays nice and tight inside the gearbox itself and doesn't wobble around. Hence, improving air efficiency, also improving accuracy because it's not wobbling around all the time shot to shot. If you're using a fusion engine, of course, you're, you're fine. It's just 
you're good to go. But if you're using a drop-in kit, this is almost necessary. And this goes hand in hand with the next upgrade. And this is more so mods that you have to do, but this is one that a lot of people skip out on when they just make drop-in kits. Doing nozzle alignment as well as doing the hop-up plumber's tape mod. There are lots of tutorials out there on how to do the nozzle alignment. If you guys want to, uh, comment down below. I can go ahead and make one for you guys as well. But it's essentially making sure that the nozzle aligns perfectly in center with your hop-up chamber and your inner barrel. That way, every single time that it shoots, it hits the BB directly in the center rather than up top or at a weird angle, which can curve your BB in the wrong direction and make it shoot all over the place. The plumber's tape mod is really easy. All you do is just take a roll of plumber tape and wrap it around the front of your hop-up chamber to get a better air seal between your chamber and your inner barrel. This improves air efficiency. Improved air efficiency results in better shot-to-shot -shot accuracy. That alongside the nozzle alignment plus the shims is a mandatory as well as very inexpensive way to just improve and up your airsoft HPA experience. You'll have better efficiency, better precision, better performance. It's a win-win-win. Now, second to last one here is getting a carbon fiber tank. One with higher capacity, one that is lighter one that will last you a lot longer. Now, this is a very optional upgrade. I still run my aluminum heavy tank on my back. It's totally fine. It is heavy, yes. Carbon fiber tanks are a lot lighter, yes. Carbon fiber tanks have higher capacity, yes. But I only play for about three hours a day. The weight isn't too bad for me, so I don't need that extra capacity or lighter weight, but this is a very good upgrade for those who actually play for extended periods amount of time. If they're, if you're on like a really long Milsim event or something like that, and you need a ton of air for the entire day, you're just shooting and dumping BVs, and you're carrying your pack around for an entire day, yes, getting a carbon fiber tank will be the best upgrade that you can do for your physical body and your back and your shoulders as well as for your gameplay experience a lighter tank means less fatigue carbon fiber tanks also come in higher capacity so higher capacity tanks mean more shots um, for the entire day it's really a win-win-win with these tanks there's really nothing wrong with it other than the fact that you do have to hydro it and that, that but that's like multiple years down the line so it's not a big deal it is expensive hence why it is a very optional upgrade but one that might be necessary if you are one to play Milsim events for really long extended periods of time or be out on the field for very extended periods of time. And lastly, we have maintenance kits. Now, I keep searching on the internet for a good proper maintenance kit that comes with everything that you need. It doesn't seem to exist or be in stock. So what I recommend is getting Novrich's maintenance kit and then getting some O-rings and that'll pretty much cover everything that you need to for uh, when it comes to HPA maintenance. Regular maintenance is the backbone to a great HPA setup. Novrich's maintenance kit is a great way to get things started, especially if you don't really need O-rings right now. You're pretty new. You just need to maintain, you just need to maintain things. Uh, your O-rings aren't blowing up and breaking. They're not too old. You just need to do basic regular maintenance. Lube things up. Make sure you lock tight your screws. That way things don't come loose. Keep the inner barrel clean. Keep keep things clean here and there. That's pretty much it. Now you can eventually buy the O-rings because O-rings do wear out over time and having spares on hand is pretty nice. Regular maintenance keeps your system reliable, efficient, and consistent. But that's about it for today's video, guys. I know there are a ton of different upgrades out there that I may not have mentioned, such as a better regulator and stuff like that. These are the upgrades that I recommend for now. If you guys have any other upgrade recommendations, comment down below. Quick shout out to my AEG to HPA video where I actually put in a lot of these upgrades into work and show you how to install them and stuff like that. So check that video out up top if you are new to HPA and need to know how these upgrades even work or come into play um, and how to install them. Those are all included in the video. Other than that, like if you end up liking it, subscribe for more content just like this and comment down below. Of course, like always, I'll see you in the next one.